Hi, this is the Year 7 Body Systems Reverse the Classroom. Okay, now the idea of this is that you look through the video, right, and it's a lot of the facts and information that's going to be given to you by your teacher during this unit. But what you've got is you've got a bit of an idea about what is going to be talked about in lessons. So the theory then is you can then learn better and learn quicker because you've already been exposed to that information. So I'm going to go through a few uh, few slides, a bit of information, and at the end there's then five questions that then you need to answer. Now this is the path through. What you do is it's the structure and function of body systems right at the very start. Then we go levels of organisation. Then we go structures of the lungs. Then we go to about breathing, skeleton, joints, muscles, and then it's the end of unit testing. Okay, so we start off with levels of organisation. Right, there's really four kind of levels. All right, a cell is the basic building blocks of life. Right, so that's then the first thing that you ever do in biology. Right at the start of year seven, as you talk about the structure and function of the cells, particularly animal and plant. And then what you do is you talk about a tissue. A tissue is, and there's kind of a pattern that goes with this. A tissue is a group of cells with a similar structure and function, all right? So in a muscle tissue, what you'll have, you'll have a variety of different cells that then do the actual muscle tissue job. The pattern then stack carries on, all right? It's where you've got a group of tissues performing a specific function. And then for the organ system, you've then got organs working together, all right, to then do a, a, a particular function. Now, sometimes on the end of this, you can also have an extra one, which is then organism. OK, so an organism is where you've got lots of organ systems working together to perform a particular function. Now, these are then some examples of some organ systems. Now, there's a lot more than this, right? For example, there's one called the endocrine system, which is all about the hormones, right? But for the purpose of this, right, we're just going to kind of go through five. The first one is the circulatory system, right? And this is then all the blood vessels throughout the entire body, right? And what you can do is you can see on that diagram there, there's blue ones and red ones that is then oxygenated and deoxygenated. But what they do is they cover the entire body, all right? Now, even in all these little bits here, right, that look as if they don't have any, right, they are also full of blood vessels and capillaries. Now, the main organ that is involved in the circulatory system is your heart. Okay, smack bang in the middle. It's a double pump that then pumps the blood around the body. The second one here is the nervous system. Now, the main organ in the, the nervous system is the brain. Right? The brain predominantly controls everything. The brain feeds into the spinal cord, and then the spinal cord then sends information right all the way around the body controlling the functions and the movement of the entire body itself then what we've got is we've got the respiratory system respiratory system is all to do with breathing the organs involved in this or the main organ is the lungs we've also got going across here it's not really an organ it's kind of like a muscular layer is the diaphragm right so the mus the or lungs is taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide. The fourth one is the digestive system. Now there's quite a lot of organs involved in this, right? So what I'll do, just down the right hand side here, I'll write down the pancreas. I'm going to write down the stomach. Okay, these are all organs that are then involved in the digestion and breakdown of food. Pancreas, stomach, liver, I'll just write down two more small intestine and large intestine oh dear, I'll get that as well. now there are other parts that are then involved with it all right but they are then the five main organs that are part of the digestive system the pancreas the stomach the liver the small intestine and the large intestine um, you can't particularly see the pancreas very well but the pancreas is somewhere around there it looks a bit like a leaf that one there is then your stomach. That there is your liver. And then the small intestine is the bit that looks like spaghetti in the middle. This bit here looks like spaghetti in the middle. 
and then the large intestine is the tube around the outside. The final one is the skeletal system. Now there's not really an organ involved in this one, right? But the skeletal system is literally just all of your bones covering your entire body, or not covering, but within your body itself. Now, breathing. What I'm just going to do is I'm just going to go through um, the structure of your breathing system. I'll start off at the top where we've got your nose and your mouth. And obviously that is then where air then goes into the breathing system itself. So through the nose, down there, through the mouth, down there. The tube that the air goes down is called a trachea or sometimes called the windpipe. And what it is, it's just like a tube that's kind of got cartilage all the way around the outside of it that prevent, uh, protects or prevents it from collapsing. Right? And if you do actually press on your neck, not too hard, right? behind your um, Adam's apple, you can actually sometimes feel the actual rings of cartilage as they go down. Um, the lungs itself, right? So what we've got here is this tube here is your trachea. Then what it does, it splits into two, which are your bronchi. Then when it splits into the two, what we've then got is we've got all these kind of smaller tubes. Now it's not actually on the diagram there, but they are called the bronchioles. Okay, and they're a bit like, bronchi is kind of like the main branches on a tree, and then bronchioles is kind of like the twigs on a tree. And then at the end of each one of those bronchioles, we've got our air sacs, right, which are these kind of little things that look like grapes at the end. Other parts of the structure of the breathing system, that's kind of the main um, uh, literal part of the lungs itself, is you've got your lungs, you've got your ribs, you've got muscles between the ribs, right, which are those there. So the white bits in there are your ribs, and then the pink, the orange bits in between are then the muscles between your ribs. And your heart is nothing at all to do with the breathing system, right, but what it is, it's all part of your thorax. Kind of your thorax is the upper half of your body. The lower part of your body is called the abdomen. And then going along here, right, this here, something I mentioned previously is your diaphragm. And what the diaphragm does, the diaphragm is what actually makes you breathe in and out. Now, this is then talking about how you actually breathe. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go through how you breathe in. It all starts, number one, with thing that I just mentioned here, which is your diaphragm, all right? Now, what happens is the diaphragm goes down, all right? So what it does, it's kind of curved like that, right? It's more curved than that normally. You can see that from the di diaphragm before, all right? And what it does, it goes down or it flattens. And what that does is it increases the volume in the kind of thorax. And the thorax is this area here. Okay, so what it does is when you breathe down or when your diaphragm goes down rather, it increases the volume. When it increases the volume, number two, it lowers the pressure. Right, so all of a sudden what you've got is in your thorax, which is mainly your lungs, you've got a lower pressure. Then, because you've got higher pressure outside, which is your atmospheric pressure, air goes in. Right? And that's the full process of breathing. So it starts with the diaphragm going down. The thorax then gets a lower pressure. Because you've got lower pressure in your lungs and in your thorax, air is then drawn in. Breathing out is the opposite. Breathing out, your diaphragm goes up. When your diaphragm goes up, pressure in your thorax increases. And because pressure in your thorax increases, air is then forced out, which is then breathing out. Now, the skeletal system. Now, on this video, I'm not going to go through right all the different bones that are throughout the entire um, skeletal system. What you've got to do is you've got to then go away and you need to literally learn all the different places and all the different bones. 
Uh, every single one of them's kind of important. Um, and what you need to do is, you know, just like I said before, you just got to kind of get yourself a diagram, put your hand over the top of it, get this video, put your hand over the top of it, and then just name all the different bones in there. All right, and that's then the skeletal system. Now the skeleton itself, right, has got four main jobs. What it does is it supports us, right? If we didn't have bones, we'd just be a blob of flesh and organs on the floor. So what it does is it supports our body, right? So the rib cage supports us, the spine, the, bone, the uh, legs, they all support us. Number two, the skeleton protects us, right? Think about the skull, right? The skull is a bone structure, right? That if you get hit on the head, it's the bone that then gets hit, protecting your brain. Your rib cage is then protecting your lungs and your heart. Number three, third role of the um, skeleton is movement. If you didn't have bones, you wouldn't be able to move at all, right? And it's all to do with the muscles, the ligaments and the tendons that then allow you to move. And the fourth one is making red blood cells, particularly in the femur in the leg, right, is one of the main places that new red blood cells are actually made. Now, just back to kind of the skeletal system, right, what we've got here is we've got three joints. Now, there are a number of other different types of joints in the body, right, but the three that I'm just going to mention here. Number one is fixed, right? So in your skull, what you've got, and you can kind of see it a little bit on that diagram there, is you can kind of see little kind of lines that go across the skull. What they are is they're originally joints that a baby had, right, a very, very newborn baby. So when that baby then popped out, what happened is the kind of the skull squashed as it came out of the mother, right? And some of the kind of the layers, like the plates on the actual skull itself, overlapped each other. Then as the baby then comes out, what happens is the skull expands. And eventually what happens, all those joints where the kind of parts of the skull, the plates of the skull overlapped each other, then become hard. They are then fixed. Okay, so they're not moving anywhere. The second one is the ball and socket. Now the ball and socket is literally where you've kind of got your hand like that, right, and the ball goes in it. So the socket is my hand, the ball goes in it, and what the ball can do is the ball can then move around within it, right? It's a very, very, very flexible joint. Two main places for that, shoulder, if you think about it, you can move your shoulder in pretty much any direction, and the hips, Again, you can move your hips very, very flexibly. The third one is the hinge. Now again, think about a door, right? All a door can do is open and close. It can't go up and down, right? And then if you think about your knee, right? All your knee can do is it can just make your bottom part of your leg go up and make the bottom part of your leg go down. And that's exactly then the same as the elbow. So what we're doing now is we're just talking about uh, muscles, right? And what we've got is we've got antagonistic pairs of muscles. Now, before I start talking about what antagonistic pairs are, if we just think about the structure all right, of muscles. The first thing is I've got a muscle there, right? And what a muscle can do is it can only contract. The muscles then need to be connected to the bone. And what they do is to actually connect to the bone itself is they use a tendon. So a tendon attaches a muscle to a bone. Now, there is another word that kind of comes into it that people sometimes get confused with, which is ligaments. Now, what a ligament is, a ligament is where you actually have, where a bone and a bone kind of join together, the ligaments hold the bones in the correct sort of places. So they're almost like an encasement around a joint, and what they're doing is they're connecting the bones to another bone and holding them in place. Now, the muscles themselves are arranged in antagonistic pairs, right? So if you look at the diagram that I've then got here, right, in this top one here, let's call it number one, is the bicep contracts. And when it contracts, it gets smaller. And when it contracts, it gets smaller and it lifts the arm up, right? Because this muscle here gets smaller, which then pulls the lower arm towards the upper arm. That is then its job. It can't do anything else. It can't push away. Then what happens is to make the arm go back down, it is then the tricep 
which is then the muscle underneath that then shortens. And when this one then shortens, what happens is it pulls the upper arm down and the biceps relaxed. Right, so what they are is they are antagonistic pairs. One muscle contracts, which is called the flexor. The other muscle contracts to pull the bone back into the same place. So you've always got two bones doing exactly the same thing. So one muscle contracts, which is the flexor. The other muscle, which is the extensor, contracts to pull the bones back into place. Okay, so again, thinking about it, right, what I've got here is for me to lift my arm up, this muscle then contracts. For me to then pull my arm back down again, it's this muscle under here that then contracts. So to lift my arm up, that contracts. To pull my arm back down again, that contracts. Now, what you've got now is you've got five questions that you need to answer. So based on the video, what are the four roles of the skeleton? Number two, what is a tissue and give an example? Number three, name five organ systems and what are the main organs of each? Now, for the last one, the skeletal, right, there is obviously no organ that is involved in it. How do we breathe in? Talk about the three different uh, parts of the actual breathing in. And then number five, what is a ligament? Okay, so what you've done now is you've now done reverse the classroom. So you should now, if you've concentrated on those video and answered those questions, you should now be able to have a bit of a knowledge when your teacher then starts talking about this information in the lesson itself, right? Which then gives you an advantage because it's going to be clearer and you're going to pick up the information more, all right? So that is our reverse the classroom for body systems completed.